guys, it's Miss O'Neill here at Rossview Elementary, and today we're going to be doing a Picasso lesson. So you're going to get to learn about the very famous artist, Pablo Picasso, and then when we're done, I'm going to show you how to create your own Picasso-style portrait. Um, and so you can put your own twist into that. But first, let's talk about who is Pablo Picasso. So here you see a picture of Pablo Picasso, born in Spain in 1881, and he actually lived uh, into his 70s, into 1973. During Picasso's childhood, he actually was not a very good student. He showed a talent for drawing at a very young age, and his very first word was pencil. That's not even a very easy word for a little bitty kid to say. Usually it's mom or dad, but his was pencil. Uh, his father actually began teaching him to draw and paint when he was a child. So by the time he was about 13 years old, he was actually a better artist than his dad was. Uh, soon Picasso lost all desire to do his homework, didn't want to do his schoolwork, and chose to spend the school days doodling in his notebook instead. During his teenage years, when he turned about 14, he moved to Barcelona, Spain to enter the Fine Arts Academy, and you can see him there. He was accepted as a very young student because of his talent. Mostly, the academy only accepted older students. But when he was 16, he moved to Madrid to go to the Royal Academy, but he was still bored with school. Every artist has to struggle, and Picasso also struggled. Uh, he was lonely and deeply depressed over the death of a close friend of his named Carlos. He painted sad scenes almost exclusively in shades of blue and green and used other cool dark colors. One of the most famous paintings from the Blue Period included the old guitarist. Picasso painted it when he was 22 and very poor. How do you think he was feeling at that time? Uh, judging by these pictures, I would say he was very depressed and very sad. And if we look closer at some of the details here, you can see the man with the guitar, his clothes are torn and tattered. Uh, even the around his shoulder there, there's a hole in his shirt and it looks ripped and his head is hung. His body posture is sad and depressed. He has no shoes on his feet. Um, he's skinny. And then you can see the people over that are at the top. Again, their bodies, their body posture is so sad. Uh, and the colors themselves are very sad. So this was known as Picasso's Blue Period. And it really does show emotion and sadness in his artwork. And it's reflective of his sadness, his own sadness. Well, then things kind of turned around Picasso. Music must have brought him out of his deep depths of despair, and he actually got obsessed with guitars. So he made more and more guitars later in life out of all kinds of different materials. Do you recognize the unusual materials here? Obviously, um, there's some cardboard happening, and the guitars are not just drawn in every instance, but uh, collaged with different types of papers, music sheets, different types of materials and found objects. And uh, even the, the cardboard guitar has a 3D sculptural type feel to it. So he's obviously playing around with the shape and the feel of music and uh, changing things around and abstracting the guitar quite a bit there. By 1905, Picasso fell madly in love oh, with a beautiful model, and he started making money by selling his artwork. Since he was happier, he started using a lot warmer colors in his paintings, including beiges, pinks, and red. And this is known as his rose period. So you can see several of these paintings have quite a bit of rosy colors, and they feel much happier and more peaceful uh, than his very sad blue period. 
In 1907, Picasso produced a painting unlike anything that he or anyone else had ever done before. Um, he actually began something called Cubism, which started an entire art movement and it was really less about making the objects look like real life and more about abstracting them, showing the forms and the shapes and the geometry and the geometric shapes and the object and different viewpoints and different um, color and lines. So he was playing around more with the different effects of the object and different types of art elements. And even in um, his self-portrait, you can see it's very, very abstract compared to his rose period where we saw things more realistic and there's some shading there and it's looking more like real life. So things started to change with his art style. In the three musicians, you can actually see three figures, but they've been very broken down into geometric shapes and angles, and um, but there's still the feel of music being made there and instruments that you can make out. And in the Weeping Woman, you can actually see teardropped shapes coming down um, below her eyes and the feeling of sadness and being upset is there in the painting, maybe with the blue that's added in and the different distortion of her features. So this was his influence for these abstracted portraits. And you could see him there with his own African mask. It's kind of silly. Uh, it looks like a woven bull head. And he's in his studio and there beside him is obviously some type of little, I don't know, cardboard friend that he's made or a cardboard sculpture that you can see that's broken down into line and geometric shape. And his drawing or sketch beside the mask looks just like the same angles and shapes that you can find in the mask. Here Picasso is late in life. He continued to create art and stayed very busy as an old man. He believed that making artwork would keep him alive. He died on April 8, 1973 at the age of 90 in France. I think I may have uh, missed that. Sorry, boys and girls. He was well known as a celebrity artist when he died. Uh, and there he is with a quote that he said to a friend, when I was the age of these children, I could draw like Raphael, and it took me years to learn how to draw like these children. So, children, you may have more than some adults do as far as the knowledge of making your art. Um, just don't let things stand in your way and use your own style and be unique like Picasso. That's what made him so famous is the fact that he did things differently, that he didn't do them just like everyone else. So now we're going to do our own Picasso style portrait. Uh, if you will join me, get your materials ready. You'll need some paper, maybe um, a pencil or markers or whatever you pr prefer to draw with. And if you would, if you have paint at home or if you have different items that you can use for color, get those out and ready now. Okay, so here we have my Picasso style portrait, which I'm going to show you a general um, way that you can do it, but you can always add your own details and your own kind of flair. And I recommend starting with a pencil and a piece of paper. Now let's look back just to refresh your memory about Picasso's style. He's obviously capable of drawing in real life, um, but in this picture you can actually kind of see how he's playing with the different shapes and the different angles of the face um, creating what looks like a profile and looking at the face straight on at the same time so what we're going to draw today is similar to this uh, it's a simple version which will help you so start out in the middle of the paper and make a u shape for a big smiley face um, and mine is about the size that I can fit my hand inside of my U, which of course, remember, your hand is a little bit smaller than my hand. Then we're going to add a top 
to the U, you can make that straight, you can make that curved, for that matter, you could make it zigzag, <laughs> and make an L coming down from the top. Now from the bottom part of the L, you're going to make a line that goes all the way down and closes up that space. If we look at that from one side, it almost looks like a profile with a nose. So we are going to draw an oval shape with a triangle coming out. Some children like to usually tell me that that looks somewhat like an ice cream cone and it does have a cone shape. You could do the same on the other side or create a, a eye that is looking forward. I'm gonna go ahead and add some eyelashes there for some detail. And don't forget your eyebrows. Now, when you add your mouth, you could show emotion with this painting by uh, drawing one side smiling and one side frowning, if you want. Or you could make them both smiling. Here's a, a boy that I've done that has uh, both sides smiling. It's however you choose to do this. You add your own details and make it your own. An oval shape for the ears will work just fine. And then add your two lines for your neck. So if you'd like, you can close that up and draw shoulders, lines for your shoulders. Um, or you can just, depending on how much space you have on your paper, just make your neck. And then it's time to add your hair. Now, if you want to do a boy, you could, we're going to do it in a little bit, and I'll just show you exactly how I did this boy, but, or you can make a girl, so you can decide on if you want longer hair or shorter hair, and whichever type of line you use is really going to determine what your hair looks like. So if you use a straighter or smoother line, your hair will look straight. A wavier line will create the look of a curly, uh, curly hair, and you could even add some spirals in there for some curls. I kind of like the way that looks, so I'll just put another one over here. And then I think my girl might need a little bit of a hat. On this one, I give, gave her a beret um, and maybe even add a few little curls on that side to give her a little bit of balance. And instead of a beret, I think I'm going to do a garden hat, uh, which is just a large swoop of an oval across the top of her head. Now, on top of that oval, I'm going to do a semicircle and then put a strip for a ribbon. And you could decorate that. I'll use diagonal lines and then another diagonal line countering to make a checker pattern. But you could do polka dots, you could do swirls. And then feel free to add your own details. Earrings are always a nice touch, eyelashes, lips, if you choose to. And so there is a Picasso style portrait. Now, I know some of you would like to see how to add the details to make it look like a boy instead of a girl. So again, we start with our U, add a top and put the L shape for the nose, continue all the way down, make the eyes, I'm going to make one as if it's looking to the side and one that's looking forward. Your mouth, your ears, your neck, and shoulders. And for the boy, I'm going to use a zigzag line. So I'm going to make the hair shorter and add a zigzag, which will give the appearance of a young man's hair. Don't forget his eyebrows. If I want to add a cap, for a ball cap, all I have to do is a kind of a swoosh over to the side with a semicircle on top. And so there you have a boy and a girl in Picasso style portrait. Of course, it will look much better while these are painted or colored like this first example. And you can always do uh, coloring using your imagination, maybe showing some emotion with your colors similar to Picasso's blue period. Um, so I'm going to take some time now to trace <coughs> and paint my little Picasso style female. Uh, I like to trace in permanent marker before painting just so that I don't lose the details of my drawing. Now, 
similarly, if you were going to be coloring instead of painting, outlining your drawing and tracing over your pencil lines really helps to show up um, the boldness and to show all the details of what you've drawn. Sometimes when we color over and uh, we don't trace, we tend to get out of our pencil lines and we tend to cover up some of our pencil lines and they get a little lost. So I do recommend tracing when you have the supplies available. You don't have to use a permanent marker, but if you're going to paint, you will need to use a permanent marker. Um, if you are using a water-based marker, then I would not recommend painting, but coloring in your lines after you trace. So I'm just finishing up my tracing here, and then I'll be choosing a, a color scheme for my, my Picasso portrait, and I like to use bright colors. Um, if you don't have the paint, like I said, you can use uh, markers, crayons, colored pencils, chalk, anything you, you have at home on hand will be fine to color this. just finished up my example here. When you finish your artwork, please post it on Seesaw and I will get to see all of your beautiful work. Uh, thanks for joining me today to learn about Picasso and we'll see you on the next art lesson.